Hey guys, before we get into the video real quick, I had literally three days to write this up, edit, and present it to you all before 2021 ended. So it would help me out immensely if you could like the video, comment to help the algorithm, and subscribe to support the channel. Also, I wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who came along to the channel this year, because you all watching my videos truly means the world to me, and I can't wait to continue growing in 2021. Oh, by the way, this video will be spoiler free, so you don't have to worry about that too. Thanks guys, and I hope you all have a great New Year's! Shin Megami Tensei 5 was certainly not what I expected at all when I started playing the game. Now, way before Shin Megami Tensei 5 even came out, in the period of time I personally like to call the OH MY GOD, I CAN'T BELIEVE THAT ATLAS HAS CANCELLED SHIN MEGAMI TENSEI 5 WITHOUT ACTUALLY SAYING THAT THEY HAVE, BUT TRUST ME, I AM A TWITTER USER. ERA. I saw an interview with one of the staff working on Shin Megami Tensei 5 stating that they wanted the game to be a hybrid of Shin Megami Tensei 4 and Nocturne. Yeah, that's right. I'm a Mega Ten fan that thinks Nocturne is mediocre. And there is nothing that you can do about it. So my expectations were, holy crap, if this game is like Nocturne, it's going to drive away so many new players, especially the ones that have come from Persona, because of so many elements that the two games don't share. So I was just really on edge, especially the day of. I personally didn't want two things to happen. To have an experience like Nocturne, and for Atlas to have been working on the game for that long, just for it to be, you know, okay. When the time finally arrived for me to play Shin Megami Tensei 5, Everything I thought would happen was thrown out the window. Shin Megami Tensei 5 took my hand and introduced me to Tokyo. It guided me through the everyday occurrences of the young high school boy that I was watching the world through. So gracefully to the point where I felt like this world actually mattered. This is a feeling that no other mainline Shin Megami Tensei title has done to me before, so this was really fresh and exciting. The best part about all of this was how the dialogue options appeared on the screen. They were initially faded out, which actually made you want to scroll through all of them, and I felt that allowed for my decision making to be more impactful. Rather than what games usually do, you kind of just gloss through what these dialogue options are, much like your real life responsibilities. I did however get a shock when I saw the map though. Because I wanted it to be like Persona 5. Wait, wait, what are you doing? No, 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 before, before you roast the absolute ever-loving crap out of me for comparing it to Persona 5. It's literally just a map, okay? I kind of just want to walk around Tokyo like I could then, because these icons, they're giving me flashbacks. <clears throat> While I do hate the map, the navigation of it was far better than I remember in previous titles, especially given it had little alerts next to where the story would proceed from. To make sure that you never had to look it up like an idiot because you just had to look over your shoulder at your cat being the cutest thing in the world and miss what the character said entirely. My time spent in this world would ultimately be cut short as the game would take its grip that it had on my hand and toss me into the vast wasteland, which is known as the art. The art is where you spend a majority of your time in Shin Megami Tensei 5. This is where the action happens. All of the action and where you are ultimately sent in order to save Tokyo from demons. I was initially blown away when I was first allowed to traverse through this place because everything here just flowed so smoothly. Not only was the area fun and great to explore, it just felt like this whole thing was a huge upgrade when compared to the older games in the series. There were no random encounters, and you could see the demons that you would fight against. There were items that were very visible on the map that you could collect, random spots of health, MP, and Magatsuhi that you could collect that would help you last longer between save points, which would also respawn after a short period of time, side quests that granted you not only rewards but a butt-ton of XP to help you level up even faster, silver fruits that contained glory that you could use to upgrade various elements of your combat and fusion skills, and let's not forget the Mimon, that not only were fun to scout out for but also netted you rewards and glory. Each of these elements made exploring the world extremely fun, as these incentives were not only huge quality of life enhancements, but really made you want to explore each corner of the map, which made for great value for money in the gameplay aspect. Oh, and let's not forget, you could also run really fast, and the best part of all- this is literally the best part of the game. You can jump. I kid you not, I freaked out when I found out that you could jump in this game, and it feels really good to be able to. As I went further into things, I would proceed to get slightly disappointed with the save system, as I really just wanted them to implement something like a lot of open world RPGs have and just have a manual save along with some random auto saves, 
so that in case I forgot to do it, at least I had something there, and that I also wouldn't have to run the risk of randomly dying in between save points. I did like how they included a feature which would take you to the last save point that you visited with a click of a button, though I do just prefer the other method better. As well as being able to explore the land, we were also able to battle demons, and I gotta hand it to them. Shin Megami Tensei 5 did it right. The battle system in this game is my overall favourite out of the mainline games for multiple reasons. The first reason is that it just feels a lot simpler to get your head around than previous games in the series, but that also might be a result of me playing the other games as well. I guess if I had to pinpoint why, it would be you are able to see a demon's weaknesses and resistances once you cleared a battle where you defeated them, which was super helpful in combat, when before you either had to hit their weakness or have owned the demon to see it. The second reason is that it kept the press turn system, which is one of my favourite things about the combat in Shin Megami Tensei. Being able to gain extra turns by critting or hitting a weakness is really fun because you could just defeat the enemy sooner than you normally would be able to. It's also great to be able to plan your turns around being able to get those extra moves in, so you can end encounters quickly. The third reason is that they included a lot more signature moves for demons in this game which made combat way more exciting, and the last reason is the whole Magatsuhi meter, which allowed for more strategy to be involved with these really good effects. All of these things just brought life back to turn-based combat and completely removed the stale feeling that I feel with some other games that also involve turn-based combat. The last thing that the art has to offer is the world of shadows, where demons gather. And this has to be my favourite part of the game. The demon fusion mechanic is really elevated in this game, as not only are you able to see demon fusion based on result, you can also see that for demons that you have in your compendium. In your compendium! You see all those hot anime boys all those girls always talk about? Well, for me, replace that with this mechanic, and I'll tell you, I was salivating all over it, and losing thousands of marker in the process. This created an addiction for me to just fill the demonic compendium as I went along, which is something that I have never really had the drive to do in other games, because honestly, I was just more concerned about when Cerberus would appear, as I would just drug him up to make him the most unstoppable being, so he wouldn't need to be removed from the party. But that's not all you can do here, because you are able to get upgrades through the glory you've collected, as well as give skills to the protag and demons through essence. The glory mechanic was really rewarding, as I really felt what each upgrade did for me, whether it was for combat or demon fusion, and the essence made it a whole lot simpler for a small brain like myself to make decent builds. I spent so much time here fiddling around with what demons I could create and what I could make them become, and I honestly don't regret a single second of it. Except maybe when I died. The most painful thing about any open world RPG is death, and Shin Megami Tensei 5 is no slouch when it comes to that. This game really isn't the Dark Souls of JRPGs, like a lot of YouTubers would have you believe, but it does have random power spikes that can catch you off guard and cause you to meet your doom. Not only that, you can also get randomly crit a bunch of times and get punished that way too, which is rather annoying, and the worst part about this all is death comes to you when the protagonist falls, not when the entire party falls. I feel like this is a step back from what they did in Shin Megami Tensei 4, where this wasn't the case, and even if the protag died, the player could still proceed by using their demons. Now, the cost of death for me was at least an hour of my life down the toilet, if not more, and this honestly sent my dopamine through the roof and I couldn't have been more happy with turning off the game and not coming back to it until, you know, all my happiness from dying wore off. Oh, and I really can't wait for the roasters to roast me in the comments section for dying. I know my ability to play a turn-based RPG is all my life is good for, and the fact that I die means my life is worthless, but you know, I think I need to hear it again. Also, really random important thing that I missed, the extra stats that you get from leveling up. Perfection. You guys want to know what else is perfection? The graphics. Well, almost. They're pretty well done, especially given the platform that they're on. The detail of the environment is insane, the demons look fantastic, and nothing really ever looks too clunky. Everything is laid out well throughout all of the various locations in the game, so nothing really feels too busy or too empty. It all just feels right. 
I do have two problems with the graphics though. Now this one is just a preference, but I honestly don't like the glittery effect on the sand because it just makes the environment feel like it's something from Barbie to me. The other one is a clear performance issue, and it's that sometimes the models just don't load in properly for a while, which makes everything just look whack. This also occurs all the time when you're looking at demons through the options menu, which is a little bit tilting, but hey, I'll forgive it because it's on the Switch, and it just hits the mark so hard otherwise. Something that kind of misses the mark though is the soundtrack. Now don't get me wrong, some of the battle themes are epic and I vibe to them pretty hard. However, some of the other tracks are just... eh. They're alright for the game and they do a decent job at enhancing the atmosphere, but it's just not something I want to listen to as much as I was made to when playing the game. It's certainly not a memorable soundtrack like Nier Automata's, or one that just makes me want to groove to the beat like in Nier The World Ends With You. To me, it's just something that will exist in the space of Shin Megami Tensei V. And the conclusion of that point brings us to the final point of Shin Megami Tensei V, the story. The story was okay. It was nothing noteworthy and it did not really have any special moments in it. It was just as basic as that girl you went to high school with and really just focused on saving Tokyo. That's all I can really say without going into immense detail, telling you specifically why it was just okay, because I did say at the start of the video that I wouldn't spoil the game, and I really just don't want to be called a liar. Shin Megami Tensei 5 does a great job at some things, but it also possesses its flaws that keeps it from being a perfect game. Its gameplay gives the series the quality of life that it really needed with all of the new options that you have while maintaining things that drew people into these games in the first place. It also makes things easier by adding options that make various game elements less tedious and a lot more simple. However, while this and its graphics raise the series from the dead and bring this game so much needed life, it is simply let down by various little things and its mediocre story, which dragged this game down from the perfection that it was trying so hard to reach. Overall, it's a great game and definitely worth your time, but don't put your expectations that it will be the next Breath of the Wild or Persona 5. If I had to give this game a numbered score, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Now I hope you guys are happy because I finally wrote this bloody review and boy was it not easy to write. Better to get it out this year before, you know, the year ends because it's already fading into the dark abyss of, yeah, you know, Shin Megami Tensei 5, it's a thing. So at least I'll get a few views on the video. What did you all think of Shin Megami Tensei 5? I'd love to know in the comment section down below. And now that everything has all been said and done, my name is Res Unleashed, the resident who unleashed her Shin Megami Tensei review out into the world, and I will catch you all next time.